In a time when we felt like no one was truly listening to what Jesus had been saying, Mary Magdalene's hurting inside was a true indicator of her faith and how she had been paying close attention to Jesus' words. On the opposite end is Judas, who's drifting more and more away from the group, busying himself with what he thinks Jesus should be doing rather than what is actually important. Episode 6 of The Chosen Season 4 was another great addition to the season's overwhelming episodes filled with sorrow, grief, and uncertainty. Some questions naturally came out after I watched the episode. Why did Jesus say Lazarus was sleeping when the news had stated that he was dead? He's just asleep. Rabbi, what are you talking about? What did the note say? If he's asleep. Is Judas really sincere in his attempts to help Jesus? Or is he acting completely selfishly and insincerely? Is Mary Magdalene the only person who understands Jesus? Did the scene between Peter and Thomas have any significant meaning? Let's discuss all of these questions. Lazarus At the beginning of the episode, in between all the turmoil, we saw Jesus reading a note written on a piece of paper. He was shattered, which only meant that the piece of news was not related to anything good. Later in the episode, there was a scene that showed a few days prior with a woman giving Jesus a note about Lazarus' sickness. When you read the note, Jesus said that it wasn't a kind of sickness that led to death. Now, Jesus at this point knew what was going to happen. He knew Lazarus was going to die and that he was going to resurrect him. But not calling this death meant that Jesus did not see that state directly as death. He saw it more like a state of sleeping, just like Jairus' daughter. Even though she seemed dead to everyone, she was just in a sleeping state waiting for Jesus to bring her back to life. In Luke 8, when Jesus goes to the house of a 12-year-old girl who died, he says to her parents, Stop wailing, she is not dead but sleeping. In the scripture, there are other moments where the deceased are referred to as being asleep as it's believed they will be awakened at the resurrection. At the end of the episode, when we saw the aftermath of the scene at the beginning, it turned out the note Jesus read was telling him the news of Lazarus' death. The apostles rightfully questioned, saying they thought Lazarus' sickness wouldn't lead to death, but Jesus said, Our friend has fallen asleep. But I will go and awaken him. This is where Big James let it slip about Jairus' daughter. The fact that Big James said that and that Jesus is going to awaken Lazarus, meaning he will resurrect him, will have a few results, one of them being Thomas's reaction. In the episode, he was questioning why Jesus hadn't brought Rhema back from the dead, but now he will see that Jesus will bring back his own relative and he even brought back a girl he didn't even know. Thomas will not be happy about this and get ready to see his frustration and anger. Lazarus' resurrection will also strengthen the faith of Jesus' followers who still have doubts about his true powers. Mary Even though she didn't have too many words in episode 6, just one scene was enough to make Mary the star of the episode. After learning about Lazarus' death, when Jesus and Mary were talking about how they felt, Jesus said that he was hurt everywhere, both inside and out. Apparently, Mary was feeling hurt on the inside too. When she asked Jesus why she was hurt that much, Jesus replied, Because you've been listening. This was such a profound sentence that told us who among Jesus' followers has been paying the closest attention to his words. Mary knows what Jesus has to do. She understands why he has to do it, and all that understanding brings out fear and anxiety for what's about to come. That's why she's hurting that much, just like Jesus. In the live stream, Dallas made a point about how Mary seemed to be the proper choice for one character who would understand Jesus the best because of all the pain she has been through herself. And I found that quite revealing and important. While the others are having a hard time understanding what Jesus is saying, while they're asking all these follow-up questions, Mary is mostly quiet, which shows the audience that she does know and understands Jesus the best, and that's perhaps because of all the pain and suffering she went through. She can tell when Jesus is suffering so much better than the others, and this fits her character story. What did you think of that scene? Judas I am so conflicted about Judas because one part of me sees that he's in the wrong, while another part tells me that he has some valid points. I mean, you would all agree that Judas was sincere when he first joined Jesus' group. And even when he said that all he wants is to see his kingdom come, 
He's not lying there, but he mixes his own ideas for what he thinks the Messiah should be and behave in life, coupled with this selfishness and anger stemming from feeling like he's different and perhaps even better than the rest of the disciples of Jesus. He has a different perception of the Messiah in his head, as we saw in the previous episodes as well. He thinks the Messiah should be a warrior, rising against the Romans when they ask him to carry their luggage. He thinks the Messiah should not be poor, he should be accepting more donations. And in connection, he thinks the Messiah's followers should also thrive to better focus on their mission. However, by focusing on what he thinks Jesus should be like, he actually misses the real Jesus and what he's doing. This was so clear in the sermon seen in Jerusalem. While Jesus was giving his sermon, all Judas could do was focus on the religious leaders, all while missing what Jesus was saying, even though Jesus had told him to pay close attention to his sermon. It is so frustrating for the audience as well to watch Judas disregard all the advice he has been getting this season from Simon Z, Matthew, John, and even Jesus, and listen to his own ego, thinking that only he is right and all the others are failing. They are doing a great job at displaying his ego and frustration. Peter and Thomas Did the scene with Peter and Thomas walking around the market sniffing soaps have any deeper meaning? The soap sniffing part? No. As Dallas said, not every scene has to move the plot forward. Sometimes it's just two characters interacting and bonding through a nice experience. But their talk about Rayma and Jesus not resurrecting her? That was quite important. There's a theme on the show with various people questioning Jesus' decisions and asking why he did something in a certain way. Peter ensures that the questioning part is not wrong, but it does become wrong if you don't accept the answer. In the rest of the show, we will see who will accept Jesus' answers. Judas is already on a downhill, not even hearing the answers probably. Thomas is having difficulty, but it's only normal after such a big loss in his life. He will accept the answers even though he may continue doubting them, if you get what I mean. What did you think of that scene between Peter and Thomas? If you found the episode a little overwhelming, you can always watch these funny BTS videos from the cast. They will help with your mood. And I will do a video on the episode 7 trailer later today. Don't miss that out. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Love you all. See you soon.